This is um, warm up, and it's warm up for the reporter of the day segment. With uh, is, is Diana Brower as our reporter, and um, to identify our attorneys, I am Mr. Jess Bovis for plaintiff, and I am the witness, and I am Mr. Holt <clears throat> for defense. And this begins with a question by Mr. Holt, for the record. So as you are driving west on 80, you would have the long, gentle curve at Cape Horn. That would be the one just preceding the accident? Yes. Can you estimate the grade at the scene of the accident? I believe I estimated it at 4%. Yes. I believe I estimated it at approximately 4%. As you're heading west through the curve there at Cape Horn, what's the visibility like as you come out of the turn? Again, we are westbound. Excuse me, yes. You have a good visibility when you come out of the curve on a long straight straightaway down to the Volkswagen curve. Where was the scene of the accident in relation to the end of the Cape Horn curve? It was about midway between Cape Horn and Volkswagen Curve. I put it at 1,056 feet west of the Cape Horn overcrossing, which is in the curve. Just based on your personal experience driving that curve, when you have similar lighting conditions, do you have any problem seeing the highway as you are approaching the scene of the accident coming out of the curve going west? No. What was the flow of the traffic like at the accident? It was heavy holiday traffic. <clears throat> and how about an approximate average speed? Traffic was stop and go. We had, at this particular time, we had traffic backed up from Colfax back up the hill and it actually came it was going from around 30 to averaging around 30 to 40 miles an hour in heavy parts. And then it would thin out like it normally does on the mountain. There was sort of an accordion effect of the traffic. Traffic would bunch up behind slow moving tracks and slow way down to maybe even 10 or 20 miles an hour. And then as it would thin out, it would go back up to 40, 50 miles an hour. I have to interrupt again because I'm confused here. Are we talking, officer, about your observations after you've reached the scene of the accident? No, this was a type of traffic that was prior to the accident that I observed that day. I believe that's what he asked me. That's essentially what I was after. Thank you. How fast had the traffic been flowing coming west for the few miles preceding the accident. It was normal flow of traffic for a Sunday, which is anywhere from 50 to 60 to 65 miles an hour. Is that posted 55 for the entire length? Yes, it is. Given the area in which the accident occurred and the traffic conditions and the visibility conditions, what would be a safe rate of speed? Approximately 50 miles an hour. And how about a safe distance between vehicles at 50 miles an hour through that area? At least 50 feet are, no, wait, we suggest one car length for every 10 miles an hour that you're driving. So it would be approximately five car lengths, which would be somewhere in the vicinity of 60, 75 feet. And if I can interject again, that's for a vehicle traveling 50 miles an hour? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What if the vehicle were traveling at approximately 60 miles an hour just at another car lane? Yes, that is kind of a guide that we have gone by to allow safe stopping distance in the case of emergency and your observation and reaction time. What did you see when you first arrived at the scene of the accident? Freeway was blocked with vehicles in the left lane and they were pretty well blocked on the right side too. Did any of the accident vehicles extend into the right lane? Yes, one of the vehicles was at an angle as depicted on my diagram on page six of the report. 
On that page, as I see it, you showed two vehicles into the right lane. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Number three and number four vehicles. Do you have any idea how far into the number two lane the number three and four vehicles actually extended? Approximately four feet. How many cars were involved in the collision? Five. Looking at your diagram on page six, what kind of vehicle was the number one vehicle? The number one vehicle was an 85 GMC Jimmy four-wheel drive. And who was? Passenger vehicle. And who was the driver? William Lewis, L-O-U-I-S. Were there any passengers in that vehicle? I don't remember. Okay, so so we are ready to do our quarter of the day segment, and Perfect. so that starts at the beginning and then stops wherever it says to stop which is on the previous page. So page eight at the bottom, huh? line 28. We're gonna start we're there. Gonna, we're gonna stop there. Yeah. Oh, where it start, says so end so on oh, the okay. TV. That's so you stop there. Yeah. Okay. okay. So how was that speed? It was a little fast when it came to the numbers. We'll do this a little slower, and you know, if, if we're going to. Is William Lewis going to be in there? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, the guy at the very end? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Okay. And then, do I put in my transcript the swearing in part? Or like a... um, no, I, we haven't been doing that. Oh, okay. We could do that, maybe next quarter. <laughs> You're not going to be here next quarter. <laughs> okay. What about on page six? What do you want us to say on line 21? Um, because I would say mate. mate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Um, okay. So we've already, um, you know, spelled our names and all that stuff. So, um, but we will re-identify just because. Um, I am Mr. Jaspovis. Jaspovis. How did I say that? Mr. Jaspovis for uh, the plaintiff. I am the witness, Robert Nelson. I am attorney for de the defendant, Mr. Holt. So I'm swearing the witness now, Mr. Corden. The witness, can you please use your right hand? Do you solemnly state under penalty of perjury that the evidence that you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. We are ready. So what speed do you um, do? 16. 16. Okay. You know, 16, 17, you know, depending okay. on the material. Okay. Here we go. For the record. Would you state your full name for the record, please? Robert A. Nelson. And you're an officer with the California Highway Patrol? Yes. Officer Nelson, I understand you've had your deposition taken before? Yes, I have. About how many times? Just a rough estimate would be fine. 20, 25, something like that. So you're very familiar with the process and what goes on? Yes, I am. So I will skip over almost all the usual things I say at the beginning and just remind you that you are under oath and the transcript that's made here can be used against you should this case go to trial and you will be allowed to make corrections on it and those corrections may also be used to impeach you for whatever purposes at trial. Do you understand that? Yes. What's your current assignment? I'm assigned to the Gold Run Office of the California Highway Patrol as a commercial officer. The what office? Ms. Reporter, please read back the last answer. I am assigned to the Gold Run Office of the California Highway Patrol as a commercial officer. 
Gold Run office. Thank you. And what does a commercial officer do? Primarily the enforcement of the California Administrative Code and regulations as pertaining to the transportation of heavy equipment and trucks in California. What was your assignment back on January 1st of 2015? It was the same, but I was acting as half-time capacity traffic officer with the responsibility of beat coverage on this particular day. How long have you been with the Highway Patrol? 25 years. Have you been employed in law enforcement in any other capacity besides Highway Patrol? Yes, I was a Los Angeles Deputy Sheriff for two and a half years, and I was a reserve officer for the Brea Police Department down in Orange County. Reserve officer where? Ms. Reporter, please read that back. Yes, I was a Los Angeles deputy sheriff for two and a half years, and I was a reserve officer for the Brea Police Department down in Orange County. Great. And the deputy experience, that was before you started the highway patrol? That's correct. Did you have any specific training in investigating traffic collisions back when you were in the academy or in classes you've taken since? Yes. What kind of training have you had? Recently, I had a class in speed from skid marks in 4 of 2010. That would be April of 2010. It was a 40 hour course. And then I had advanced accident investigation course that I attended, which was 80 hours on September 3rd in 2012. I've had training with the California Highway Patrol mate team, and I am a current member, an alternate member of the Valley Division mate team specialized in human factors and physical evidence. What do you mean by human factors? Specializing in the drivers and passengers and their injuries, their statements, their instruments of injury within a vehicle, cause of injuries and damage to the vehicles and physical evidence that is left on the roadway as to assisting in reconstruction of the accident. Have you ever qualified in a California court as an accident reconstruction expert? Yes, California and Nevada. How many times have you qualified in California? Just one time. And how about Nevada? Just this past year. Roughly speaking, about how many traffic collisions have you investigated in your 25 years? And if that's not a possible... Thousands. Thousands? Yes. Okay. Did you respond to the scene of the multiple car accident on I-80 on January 1st of 15? Yes, I did. About what time did you arrive? Maybe he could check on his report. Sure. Would you mind? I have a copy marked as Exhibit 1, and just so we know what we are referring to, unless you have special marks in the report, you could use the exhibit. I arrived at the scene at 1357. That would be 157 in the afternoon. 
Do you know about how long after the accident occurred that was? Approximately the accident occurred at about 1340. So that would put me about 17 minutes. I just want to go over the basic conditions at the scene. What were the lighting conditions like at the time? It was daylight. No fog? No. And how about the roadway surface? Roadway was clear and dry. What's the, what's Interstate 8 be like about at a mile preceding the accident? It is. Is it curvy or hilly or what? What's the terrain like? Are you talking about the westbound lanes? Right. The location of the accident occurred on what we call three mile grade, which is three miles of downgrade from Magra Road to the bottom of the grade, which is approximately two miles from Colfax or about a mile from Colfax, excuse me. Can I interrupt you? Would that be east of Colfax? That would be east of Colfax. What about twists and turns in the road as you are approaching the scene? Yes, there are about three pretty good curves in the roadway. Uh, continuing on with our warm-up, we have um, Mr. Carlson's for defense, who is examining, and Mr. Feder for the plaintiff. Um, and this is um, from the same material that the 160 take will be from. The 140 take is different material, but we'll do the 160 first. But. For now, we have warm up to identify. I am Mr. Fedder for the plaintiff. I am the witness. I am Mr. Carlson's for the defense. Begins with a question by Mr. Carlson. Carlson's. For the record, did you ever consider that the owner's manual states that there's more air pressure required in the tires? if you load the car full of cargo? I want to interpose an objection. That does assume facts not in evidence. Go ahead. I don't know. I don't remember. Now, you were pretty clear, were you not, that the car was fully loaded as you were traveling to Phoenix from Redwood City? Is that correct? Yes. When you left Phoenix and headed back to Redwood City, you were still aware you had all the same things in the car, is that right? Yes. And did you take anything out and unload it in Phoenix? Some of the rice I took out. All right. Other than some of the rice, did all the remaining clothing and all the other baggage remain in the car? No. Let me ask it again. Did all the clothing and all the other articles that you were carrying in the car remain in the car on your trip back from Phoenix toward Redwood City? Yes. Did you, in fact, buy any groceries along the way that were being carried in the car at the time of the accident? No. Did you have any food in the car at all other than rice? We had some leftover tacos and some food from the Jack in the Box. At the Jack in the Box, did you stop and then pick up the food and continue driving with the food still in the car? In the Jack in the Box, we ate in the Jack in the Box. So how did you happen to have some tacos or whatever in the car after leaving Jack in the Box? I bought some extra food for the children for the future driving. Were you eating anything at the time that the accident occurred? No. Well, were you drinking anything at that time? No. 
Was anybody in the car eating or drinking anything at the time the accident occurred? I think Danny was eating something. Were you helping him in any way with his food? No. Do you smoke? No. Did you have anything to drink of an alcoholic beverage nature in the 24 hours before the accident? I don't drink. I don't drink. Did you take any type of drug or medicine for any purpose in the 24 hours before the accident? No. Were you on any sort of medication at that time? No. For example, has a doctor prescribed any pills or anything like that? No, no. Were any of the children on any medication at that time? No. Did you have any sort of tranquilizers or other drugs along with you in the car at that time? No, none. In your suitcase, did you have any sort of a container containing any sort of drug? No. Do you remember a suitcase that was a little square suitcase that had a metal band around the whole circumference of it? What color? I don't know the color. I can just give you a description of it. How does it look? Could you tell me? It looks like a Pullman case. It has a metal band with a handle on top with two snaps at the top and a solid metal strip around the whole narrow width of the suitcase. Overnight case, you mean? No, this was larger than an overnight case. It would be a 24-inch high suitcase. Maybe that is the green color you are talking about? Did you have a green color suitcase? Yes. Did you carry in that suitcase some overnight drugs and cosmetics? No. Were you personal, were your personal belongings brought to you at the hospital where you were taken? The first time, no. Did you ever get your overnight bag at the hospital? No, I was all alone. Do you remember a nurse walk-ins at the hospital where you were staying? Excuse me? A nurse by the name of Watkins at the hospital. Thank you. No. Now, getting back to the tires, what was their condition at the time of this trip to Phoenix and back? In and out of the shape of the wheel. It was in good shape in and out. What do you mean by in and out? The shape of the wheel. You look at the outside, the shape of the wheel. Do you know what tire tread is in English? Do you know what that word means? No. Do you know what having good rubber tread on your tire means? Yes, I think so. What was the condition of the tread of the tires on your car as you were traveling from Phoenix back to Redwood City? You are referring to the four tires on the vehicle, but not the fifth one in the trunk? Right now, I am just referring to the tires on the car, not in the car, but on the car. She didn't know whether she had one in the trunk. The wheel itself wasn't worn out and was like new. The shape, like the new kind. It wasn't worn out, just good tread. You mean the tires looked like they were new? All I can say, it wasn't worn out. When is the last time you looked at the tread of your tires? Shell Gas Station, Phoenix. So at the Shell Station, you had actually gotten out of the car and you were looking at the tires? Yes, I saw the wheel. Why were you looking at the tires at the Shell Gas Station in Phoenix? Because my husband told me to check up the car. For example, like the windshield and like that. Just, you know, for to take the car for the checkup before you leave Phoenix. Why did your husband tell you that? If you know. I called my husband before I left Phoenix. All right? I am sorry. I didn't hear that. I called my husband before I left Phoenix. Did your husband specifically tell you that he thought that there was a problem with one of the tires? No. Well... 
why did you start talking about the car with your husband? Could you tell me how that came into the conversation? Because it's a long trip. So my husband, such as, says it's better to check up before you take a long trip. With respect to the tires, did you check all four tires on the car itself? When he checked, it's all four of them. Did you have a spare tire? I thought I had. Where was the spare located? In the front. I asked you this morning whether you had a spare tire in the luggage compartment where the clothing was, and you told me you didn't know. Is there something that has happened since this morning that has now caused you to know? I always thought there was a spare tire in the front, but it seemed like the day of the accident, there were no spare tire. I asked you because I am not sure there was a spare tire at the scene of the accident. Can you read that last answer? I am not sure if I caught it all. Let me start again. On the trip from Phoenix to Redwood City, did you have a spare tire in the front luggage area where you had clothing stored? I don't know. When is the last time you had ever seen the spare tire in the car? I don't know. With respect to the car just before the accident occurred, could you tell me if there was anything that was unusual about the car in any way before the first thing happened that led without interruption to the accident? When I was going, I felt the car slip out on the side. The car slid out, and then that is when I realized there must be a flat tire. And that's, that is when I realized something was not quite right. How long before the accident occurred was this? Right at that time. Well, before that time then, before the moment before the accident started happening, and up to that time, did you have any problem at all with the car? No. So the first thing that you felt that was wrong with the car is it felt like it had a flat tire? Yes. I am going to object to the question. It misstates her testimony. She said it felt like the car was slipping from side to side. The testimony stands, counsel. She answered, you may not like it, but that is the... Your question was for the witness. I don't quote the witness. I ask questions. With respect to the car itself now, in this moment, before something started happening, at that point in time, could you tell me what the roadway was like? Was it a straight road? Was it a curved road or what? It's freeway. Is the road straight or is it a curve one way or another? I believe it was a straight. So your car was on a straightaway the first time you felt the sensation of like having a flat tire. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Now at that particular moment when this happened, where was Kathy seated? Kathy was sleeping on the back of the seat. Was she across the entire seat or was she in one corner or what? It was on a corner laying down in the corner on the left side of the back seat. When you say the left side, is that behind the driver or the front passenger? It's behind the passenger. So if you are sitting on the car, it would have been to your right. Is that correct? Excuse me, if you are sitting on the car? In the car, council. Right, yes. You know what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now we'll repeat that. Uh, we have time to really do it. Okay. Um, why don't we read, okay, let me just change where we go up to 14. Okay. Fifteen? Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to read in fifteen. Oh, sixteen. Yeah, fifteen. Sorry. 
forgot what to do now. Um, let's do that at, uh, let's do that at the uh, four minute mark on page 85. So that's 15. So what are we doing going to 15, sir? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so repeating and, and stepping it up in speed. All right, here we go. For the record, did you ever consider that the owner's manual states that there's more air pressure required in the tires if you load the car full of cargo? I want to interpose an objection. That does assume facts not in evidence. Go ahead. I don't know. I don't remember. Now, you were pretty clear, were you not, that the car was fully loaded as you were traveling to Phoenix from Redwood City. Is that correct? Yes. When you left Phoenix and headed back to Redwood City, you were still aware you had all the same things in the car. Is that right? Yes. And did you take anything out and unload it in Phoenix? Some of the rice I took out. All right. Other than some of the rice, did all the remaining clothing and all the other baggage remain in the car? No. Let me ask it again. Did all the clothing and all the other articles that you were carrying in the car remain in the car on your trip back from Phoenix toward Redwood City? Yes. Did you, in fact, buy any groceries along the way that were being carried in the car at the time of the accident? No. Did you have any food in the car at all other than rice? We had some leftover tacos and some food from the Jack in the Box. At the Jack in the Box, did you stop and then pick up the food and continue driving with the food still in the car? In the jack-in-the-box, we ate in the jack-in-the-box. So how did you happen to have some tacos or whatever in the car after leaving jack-in-the-box? I bought some extra food for the children for the future drive. Were you eating anything at the time that the accident occurred? No. Well, were you drinking anything at that time? No. Was anybody in the car eating or drinking anything at the time the accident occurred? I think Danny was eating something. Were you helping him in any way with his food? No. Do you smoke? No. Did you have anything to drink of an alcoholic beverage in nature in the 24 hours before the accident? I don't drink. I don't drink. Did you take any type of drug or medicine for any purpose in the 24 hours before the accident? No. Were you on any sort of medication at that time? No. For example, has a doctor prescribed any pills or anything like that? No, no. Were any of the children on any medication at that time? No. Did you have any sort of tranquilizers or other drugs along with you in the car at that time? No, none. In your suitcase, did you have any sort of a container containing any sort of drug? No. Do you remember a suitcase that was a little square suitcase that had a metal band around the whole circumference of it? What color? I don't know the color. I can just give you a description of it. How does it look? Could you tell me? It looks like a Pullman case. It has a metal band with a handle on top with two snaps at the top and a solid metal strip around the whole narrow width of the suitcase. Overnight case, you mean? No, this was larger than an overnight case. It would be a 24-inch high suitcase. Maybe that is the green color you are talking about? Did you have a green color suitcase? Yes. Did you carry in that suitcase some overnight drugs and cosmetics? No. Were your personal belongings brought to you at the hospital where you were taken? The first time, no. Did you ever get your overnight bag at the hospital? No, I was all alone. 
Do you remember a nurse Watkins at the hospital where you were staying? Excuse me? A nurse by the name of Watkins at the hospital. Thank you. No. Now getting back to the tires, what was their condition at the time of this trip to Phoenix and back? In and out of the shape of the wheel, it was in good shape in and out. What do you mean by in and out? The shape of the wheel. You look at the outside, the shape of the wheel. Do you know what tire tread is in English? Do you know what that word means? No. Do you know what having good rubber tread on your tire means? Yes, I think so. What was the condition of the tread of the tires on your car as you were traveling from Phoenix back to Redwood City? You are referring to the four tires on the vehicle, but not the fifth one in the trunk? Right now, I am just referring to the tires on the car, not in the car, but on the car. She didn't know whether she had one in the trunk. The wheel itself wasn't worn out and was like new. The shape, like the new kind. It wasn't worn out, just good tread. You mean the tires look like they were new? All I can say is it wasn't worn out. When is the last time you looked at the tread of your tires? Shell gas station, Phoenix. So at the Shell station, you had actually gotten out of the car and you were looking at the tires? Yes, I saw the wheel. Why were you looking at the tires at the Shell gas station in Phoenix? Because my husband told me to check up the car. For example, like the windshield and like that, just for, you know, to take the car for the extra checkup before you leave Phoenix. Why did your husband tell you that? If you know. I called my husband before I left Phoenix. All right? I am sorry. I didn't hear that. I called my husband before I left Phoenix. Did your husband specifically tell you that he thought that there was a problem with one of the tires? No. Well, why did you start talking about the car with your husband? Could you tell me how that came into the conversation? Because it's a long trip, so my husband, such as, says it's better to check up before you take a long trip. With respect to the tires, did you check all four tires on the car itself? When he checked, it's all four of them. Did you have a spare tire? I thought I had. Where was the spare located? In the front. I asked you this morning whether you had a spare tire in the luggage compartment where the clothing was and you told me you didn't know. Is there something that has happened since this morning that has now caused you to know? I always thought there was a spare tire in the front, but it seemed like the day of the accident there were no spare tire. I asked you because I am not sure there was a spare tire at the scene of the accident. Can you read that last answer? I am not sure if I caught it all. Let me start again. On the trip from Phoenix to Redwood City, did you have a spare tire in the front luggage area where you had clothing stored? I don't know. When is the last time you had ever seen the spare tire in the car? I don't know. Stop there. Okay, time to take.